Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be talking about the Video Player plugin. This is yet another one of the plugins that is a part of the Flutter Fire repository, which means that it's a plugin that is both maintained by the Flutter team and the community. Let's get started. The Video Player is an interesting plugin because it allows us to directly interface with the platforms that we're running on. So if we want to play a video on Android, we're actually working with the native Android video player, and the same goes for iOS. The video player also allows us to play two types of videos. We can play videos from a network source, and we can play videos from a local source. We'll take a look at both of these sources in this tutorial. First, we'll talk about playing a video from our assets folder. And I've actually already added a video into the assets folder. So I've created this folder called assets. I've put a folder called videos in it. And then I've put a video called intro.mp4 inside of it. In our PubSpec YAML, we can add in the actual plugin. The plugin is called video underscore player. And the current version is 0.5.1. So that's the version that I will be using for this tutorial. To gain access to the video on our hard drive, we need to define it as an asset. We can do this like we would with any image. So we just create an assets key inside of our PubSpec YAML, and then we add in the path to the video. Once we've done this, we can gain access to our video inside of our application. Inside of our main.dart file, we've got a bunch of boilerplate. We have our main function, then we have a root widget, and then we have a stateful widget, and inside of its state class, we have an empty scaffold. We can bring in our package by importing video player backslash video player dot dart, and then down inside of the state class of our stateful widget, we can create what's called a video player controller. So as I mentioned before, we do directly interface with the platform native video players. And this video player controller is what allows us to control how we deal with those particular platform video players. We also want to define a listener function. And I'll define this as a void callback function. This means that the function has no arguments and it has no return value. We can override our init state function and then set up the listener. For this listener, all we want to do is have an anonymous function that directly calls the set state function. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to add it to our player controller so that when the video receives data from the platform, it automatically updates our widget. So for every single frame that we get for our video, our widget will update. And this will make it so that our video will play in a very smooth manner inside of our Flutter UI layer. Let's create a function called create video, and we'll use this to define our video inside of our application. We can first add some logic to see if our player controller is equal to null. And if it's equal to null, then we can instantiate a new video player controller using the asset constructor because we're directly calling on a local asset. And in here, we just pass in a string to where the video is located on our device. We can then use our cascade operator to add a listener directly to our player controller. So we instantiate the video player controller, then we add the listener, and then we can set up the volume. The set volume function takes in a double between 0.0, .0 and 1.0, 1.0 1 being the loudest and 0.0, .0 being mute. By setting it to 1.0, we're setting it to the loudest it can be. There is one thing to note about volume, however. Our emulator doesn't actually interface with the sound card properly. And as a result of this, you won't actually hear any volume out of our emulator. However, this will work properly on a device. After we set up the volume, we need to initialize our video player controller. Once we have initialized it, we can then play our video. So now that we have our create video function, let's set up our user interface. Down in the scaffold, we have an app bar. And then for the body, we'll make a center. And then inside of it, we'll make an aspect ratio. The aspect ratio widget is basically a container 
but the width and the height of this container is based on a specific ratio that we put into the aspect ratio property. Because our video is high definition, we can put in the actual ratio of the video itself. So I put in 1280 by 720. We can, of course, minimize this down to 16 by 9. And this will still give us a decent aspect ratio for the actual video player size. Standard definition, I believe, is 4 by 3. And then there are other various ratios that you can use for other types of videos. Inside of our aspect ratio, we can create a container. And then the child of this container will be a ternary operator, where we check to see if our player controller is null. If it's not null, then we create a video player. And the video player widget just takes in the player controller, so the video player controller. If it is null, however, we'll just output an empty container. Now we can create a floating action bar that's connected to our scaffold. And we can have this floating action bar call to our create video function, as well as play the video. So down here we have this empty on press function and then the actual icon for the floating action button will be a play arrow. In the on press function we call to create video to create the video and then we can call player controller dot play to actually play the video inside of our video player widget. Here's our application. So you can see there is no widget in the middle yet. When we hit the button, however, the video starts playing and the widget appears. And then when the video hits the end, it just stops playing. If we hit the button again, you'll notice that the video doesn't start again. So it doesn't start from the beginning again. And that's because we need to reinitialize our controller. We can extend our create video function by saying, OK, well, if this is equal to null, then we want to set up our video player controller. And we'll initialize it and we'll even play it. And if we have something in our video controller, then we want to check to see if our player controller dot value is playing, which means it's actually actively playing the video. And if it's actively playing the video, then we can call player controller dot pause on it to pause the video. Otherwise, if it has something in it, but it's like not playing, this means that it's finished. We want to reinitialize our player and then play it. Also, before we take a look at our new application, let's override the deactivate method and set it so that our player controller sets the volume to mute and then it removes the listener. The deactivate method is called when this state class is removed from our widget. So this doesn't mean that the widget itself was removed from the tree. It just means that the state, for whatever reason, is removed. And this can happen for various reasons. And because it would be bad to have the video continue to run, we just want it to be removed in a way that's uninvasive. And so we can do it this way. So by muting it and by making it so that it doesn't call set state, it won't get all choppy and it won't continue to play sound even if we've moved away from the video. All right, so here's the new application. If we click the button, you can see the video plays. And if we click the button again, it will start again from the beginning. Also notice that while it's playing, if I click the button, rather than pausing, it starts from the beginning again and it plays all the way to the end. This is because the pause functionality is not working for this plugin currently. I can only assume this has something to do with the fact that Dart 2 came out and that they haven't updated the plugin since then. It's an unfortunate side effect of the fact that the Flutter Fire repositories are not rigorously maintained compared to third party plugins. Hopefully this will get fixed sometime soon, and if it doesn't, then I'll just make a pull request and fix it myself. Now that we are able to play asset videos, let's take a look at what it takes to play a network video. Rather than calling to the asset constructor, we can call to the network constructor, and then in here we can put in a URL to a video. 
This is a video that is just a part of the Flutter API, and it's just an MP4 video. There are certain videos that can't be played by the video player. You'll have to take a look at the documentation to see what videos are covered and which ones are not. I can tell you off the top of my head that if you put a YouTube video link directly into this constructor, it will not work properly. However, there is a way to get around that, and I'll show you that method in a moment. Now that we have our network video in here, we can hit our play button again, and you'll notice the network video will start. So we've got this nice little butterfly, and everything is playing perfectly fine, and it flies away, and we can restart it like we did before. We can't pause it again because the pause functionality isn't currently working properly, but everything else is working perfectly fine. There are a few more properties that we can set on our controller. For instance, we can tell it that we want it to loop indefinitely. And so we can call set looping. And this can either be set to true or false. It's false by default, I believe. And if you set it to true, the video will loop over and over and over again. We also have another method called seek to. This allows you to pick a specific duration of the video to start at. So for instance, if I put in seek to, and then I put in the duration of one second, this will start at one second into the video. So here, if we load our video, you can see it starts one second into it, and then it just starts as normal. And every time it loops, it will start at that seek to duration as well. I mentioned before that we can't directly put a YouTube link into the video player network constructor. So here I've put in a YouTube link. If we try to play it, all that will happen is that you'll get a black screen. And that's because the video player doesn't know how to decode the YouTube link. We can decode the YouTube link by using the Google YouTube API. There is a nice API that's set up by a user that allows us to just put in a URL and then this will kick back URLs that we can use inside of our Flutter application. So here I've put in the YouTube link that I want, and it kicks back five different URLs. The first one is the high def 720 version, and I'll just grab it. Now I can come back into our application and paste this link in here. And there is one more thing that we need to do to make this work properly. To make this work properly, you want to search for a section that says C equals web and just remove it. And you need to remove the and sign as well. So remove this entire section of the URL. And now we should actually be able to play the video inside of our Flutter application. So here you can see that this is one of my YouTube videos. And it is actually playing despite the fact that there's not much moving around. If you can look right there, you can see the cursor blinking. And after a little while, you should see me actually moving around and typing things in and stuff. If you like this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.